Professor, thank you so much for your time uh, this evening. This is very worrying indeed. This was, of course, a woman uh, who had uh, uncontrolled HIV, I understand. Uh, but tell us a little bit more about this research. Okay, so, so, so what we found, and that's in a very um, detailed, basic research program of, of, that we do with a colleague of mine, Professor Alex Siegel uh, from ARI, yeah. What we found, it, it, it is an individual that it is, um, that, that, that's HIV, the, the, the virus, the HIV virus is resistance to the treatment, so that person, it is failing on ART treatment, yeah. And because the person is failing on ART treatment, the level of the CD4 is very low. It is in single digits, yeah. And what it happened is that when that person got infected with COVID ID or SARS-CoV-2, it could not clear the virus for over 200 days, yeah. So what we did, of course, one of the big objectives is make sure that this individual uh, respond to antiretroviral therapy, yeah. But during that time, until she respond to antiretroviral therapy, yeah, the virus, the SARS-CoV-2, it keep evolving and it keep creating many of the mutations that are seen in the variants, not only in the variant that we, we found in South Africa, but also similar mutations that are seen in the variant in the UK and in Brazil, what now we call then the alpha, the, the beta, the South Africa, and the gamma. Yeah, so, so that was quite worrying because it shows not only this research, but also research in the UK and the US that immune compromised people, normally due to cancer therapy, but in this case, during to uncontrolled HIV, could become almost like factory of variants. That is, I mean, I'm glad I'm sitting down, Prof, because that is, that is such disturbing news. When you say that people who are immunocompromised, if they get COVID-19, the virus essentially just circulates and recirculates in their body and mutates within their body, keeps mutating within their body, as you say, becoming a factory of variants. How common could this, could this be in South Africa? We know that we have the world's largest antiretroviral treatment program, but we also know there's a lot of people who've got HIV who are not in treatment. So how much of a risk is this for us here in South Africa? Okay, so, 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 so this research that, that also is done by Professor Lex Siegel and, and with our group also show that if a patient is viral suppressed, what it means, it is on good uh, antiretroviral treatment for, for, for HIV, that person will clear the virus very quick as a normal person, yeah. So that's, that's the kind of silver lining or, or potentially good news about that. In the same way, when we found a variant, it was terrible news, but we saw that the variants can help to develop vaccines. So, so, so it's almost the same. So it's not good news that, that immune compromise compromised individuals could, could produce new variants, but potentially the, if we can also increase our testing of, of, of HIV yeah, and putting more people on treatment and make sure that they are viral suppressed, not only we're going to decrease a lot the burden of HIV, transmission of HIV, but we could also uh, decrease the chance of new variants arise. Yeah. And, and given that South Africa went through such a big effort to the COVID pandemic to strengthen the HIV treatment program would be much easier because we already have the diagnostics, they are rapid diagnostics, the drugs, the new therapy is very, very efficient. So once we, we, this patient was, was, was changed to the, to the new line of therapy very quick, it suppress HIV and also clear SARS-CoV-2. So, so I think that one of the main uh, take home messages is that is a wake up call to not only focus on COVID ID, but also focus on our big HIV uh, population. So this woman, so as, as you're explaining, she's now okay. She's got her HIV under control and she's been able to clear uh, COVID-19 from her system. But as you were saying, that while that virus circulates through the system for that length of time, does that mean that we could see uh, one person infecting others with completely new variants, completely new mutations, uh, and the longer they're in the human body, the more time they have to develop those? 
Yes, yes, exactly, exactly. But 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 this we know as a scientific community. For example, in the UK, when they discovered the, what's called now the alpha variant, the B.1.1.7, they could link that to a patient that was immune suppressed on cancer therapy. Yeah, which which couldn't clear the virus, the virus developed mutation, and then it fall in the population and create what the, this alpha variant, it is the one dominating most of the infections in Europe and the US. Yeah. So, so we knew that, 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 that that's possible for immune su suppressed individuals. What is new about that research is that the first case that we see on, on someone doing to, to long-term HIV infection, yeah, and also someone that didn't receive uh, antibodies or covalescent plasma to try to, to clear SARS-CoV-2. So, so it, is, it is new results, yeah, it's gonna open also a whole line of important research that needs to be done also. And what we think that is very important is also now to prioritize people that uh, live with HIV to get viral suppressed because they're going to behave exactly as, as an infected person, at least against SARS-CoV-2, but, but also to prioritize them potentially for, for vaccination of SARS-CoV-2. It, it reminds me a little of when we first uh, knew about the, the virus and we were so concerned about what it would do to people who have HIV and then we learned if your HIV is controlled, you should be fine. Uh, so this is, it is very worrying that in fact, uh, you could become an incubator of many new variants. If you don't control your HIV, you get COVID-19 and it could stay in your system for absolutely months. And of course, we hear this as we go into our third wave, real concerns for us here in Gauteng. Um, our vaccination uh, program is not as ramped up as we would like it to be. Your thoughts on, on where we are in terms of heading into the third wave and how bad it might be compared to the second wave? Okay, okay. first, just to be clear, our third wave is being caused by the same variant that caused the, the second wave, and, and we, we do that as a big partnership between between CRISP, NICD, and many other universities in South Africa. So we know that's the same variant, not a new variant that have appeared. One, another thing that we knew, and we have been talking about that per weeks, yeah, is that we are expecting the third wave to be more severe in the inland provinces in South Africa, such as yeah, Hauteng, the Free State, the, 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 the Northern Cape and Northwest. Yeah. Why, why that is because they had a less severe second wave, yeah? How severe is going to be the third wave at the moment? We do not know, yeah, but, but, but we do see the numbers climbing very quick. And, and of course, this, this massive cold front in South Africa probably did not help, yeah, so because people tend to be in closer proximity, yeah, and closed space, yeah. So, so a simple suggestion is, is, to, is to make sure that we have air circulation, yeah, in places that, that, that are closed, even in the cold front, and to really try to, to increase vaccination, yeah, and, 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 and also try to really, really avoid super spreading events so, so, so this third wave doesn't spread very fast around the country. Yeah, the time to take action is now. Thank you so much uh, for telling us about that latest research. Professor Tulio de Oliveira, Director of the KwaZulu-Natal Research Innovation and Sequencing Platform, CRISP, speaking about the third wave. He says that the scientists do expect it will be more severe inland. So that is provinces such as Gauteng and Free State. We have to be particularly cautious.